So, my seven-year wife. Seven years long we've been married and she decides to cheat on me. Okay, I'm not going to let her know that I know about it at all. But I am going to do this. I'm going to divorce her. And I'm going to make sure I leave her with nothing. Not even a penny. Hey, everyone. I wasn't sure if I'd ever post here, but my life's been turned completely upside down. And I just need to vent and get support from the community. I'm Mike, a 28-year-old dude. For the past seven years, I've been happily married to my college sweetheart, Sarah. We met during freshman orientation and uh, just clicked immediately. She was cute, funny, and smart. Everything that I was looking for. We stayed up all night the first day just talking, and I knew right then this girl was special. Well, over the next four years, we were inseparable. We both studied business and bonded over pulling all-nighters cramming for exams together, celebrating after acing them. Sarah just got me, you know. Well, we could be completely silly together and she would laugh at my stupid jokes. After graduation, we moved in together. Those first few years living there together were heaven. We'd cook dinner and slow dance in our PJs in the kitchen, <laughs> have these movie night marathons and take our dog on long walks into the night. Make big plans for our future over a bottle of wine, even. Well, a few years later, we got married into this beautiful outdoor ceremony. All our friends and family together, celebrating our love. I'll never forget seeing Sarah walk down the aisle looking radiant in her wedding dress. How sure I felt that this amazing woman was my soulmate. Our life together was honestly perfect. We were totally in love and enjoyed each other's company even supported each other's goals, and just felt like the luckiest people in the world to have found such others so early in life. We talked excitedly about the future, children, buying a house with a yard, you know, taking these family vacations yearly and growing old together. Yeah, yeah, seven years of true marital bliss. Or so I thought. Last week, that illusion came crashing down around me. I've been away on a work trip and decided to come home just a day early to surprise Sarah. As I pulled into the driveway, I noticed a strange car parked outside that I did not recognize. Ah, oh, that's weird. Uh, maybe uh, she has a friend over. I came inside quietly and that's when I heard the noises coming from the bedroom. You know, the squeaking bed, the moans of passion. No, 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 this can't be real. But... There she was, in our bed, having coitus with another man. I was frozen in shock. I could not even begin to speak or move. They did not notice me standing there in disbelief, and after what seemed like an eternity, I just stumbled out of the house and drove aimlessly. My whole world collapsed in an instant. The woman I trusted completely, my soulmate, cheated on me in our own home, and I was confused and angry. That night, as I sat alone in a parking lot... I knew I wasn't going to let this go, the betrayal. Come on, I wanted revenge on Sarah for destroying our life together, and I would make sure it was proportional to the pain that she caused me. This was not going to be easy for her. Well, I'll update you guys with some uh, initial planning or whatnot. Initial planning and reactions. The first week after D-Day, that's what they call Discovery Day on the infidelity forums I've now joined, <laughs> it was spent in shock and intense grief. I cried more than I ever have in my days, and I felt lost and confused and so unbearably sad. My friends wanted me to confront her right away or go to therapy, but that seemed inadequate for what she had done. How could a simple conversation fix the nuclear bomb that she set off for our marriage? Therapy might help me cope long term, but did not get to the root of the injustice. I knew I had to do something big. Something that would shake her world as deeply as she shook mine. I wanted the punishment to fit the crime. I mean, I decided then and there that I would have my revenge on Sarah in a calculated, meticulous way. This would require patience on my part. Waiting for the right opportunities even, but the payoff would be worth it. She would feel what I felt. I started gathering evidence on her affair in secrecy. I hired a PI to follow her and get proof, pictures, video, everything. I needed undeniable evidence of what was coming, and he got it too. I mean, pictures of Sarah kissing this dude in public. 
going into hotels with him, his hands all over her. It made me sick, but uh, I needed to see it. In the meantime, I distanced myself from Sarah emotionally and physically. I started working late, canceling our date, stopped saying I love you, and I could see that she knew something was wrong. But she probably assumed it was stress from work. Well, little did she know this was just the beginning. I hinted to some friends and family that we were having relationship issues. Planting these early seeds that not all was perfect in our marriage. My mom was worried. She knew how much I loved Sarah and did not want this to end. But I assured her this was something I had to do. I met with a lawyer and financial advisor to divide our assets and plan for an eventual divorce. I was strategic in protecting my finances so that this is all eventually going to come out. I would be prepared. I'd worked hard for what I had and Sarah did not deserve a cent of it after betraying our vows. I started planning each stage of my revenge. It started small, isolating her from friends, undermining her at work, turning family against her, but it would culminate into a big final confrontation, everything coming out to a public display, then leaving her broke, alone, and humiliated. I don't know, maybe this sounds crazy, but planning my vengeance gave me comfort during this time, and making her feel my pain seemed like justice to me. I was now fixated on vengeance and could not stop ruminating over how I could bring Sarah to her knees. Well, I'll update you guys soon enough. Update number one. Six months since D-Day. Hey guys, it's been six months since D-Day and I'm uh, ready to start enacting my revenge. The first part was revealing Sarah's affair to our inner circle. Oh, I organized a dinner and let everything out over appetizer. Our friends were shocked, some refusing to believe me until I showed them hardcore evidence. My family was disgusted, most taking my side and immediately turning against Sarah. I filed for divorce, making sure I had the upper hand legally and financially. I was fair, but not generous. She did not deserve my charity, after all. My lawyer, oh, was ruthless, making sure Sarah got as little as possible. She tried to fight it, but I had too much proof of the affairs and she had almost zero leverage. It slowly started to dawn on Sarah that her reputation was crumbling. Some of her friends pulled away and she felt ostracized by family. She pleaded with me to try counseling or to take her back, but I just coldly said our marriage is over. At first, she tried desperately to save face, telling people I was overreacting or that we had unresolved issues in our marriage, but as more evidence came out providing her serial cheating with multiple men, nobody believed her anymore. She looked like a total fraud. I thought I'd feel good about this, though, at this stage. Vindicated, even. But honestly, it was just traumatic reliving it all again and incredibly sad. Watching a relationship and life we built over seven years collapse? I stayed resolute, though. She deserved it. The legal battle got nasty. Sarah tried claiming I was abusive, that I drove her to the affairs. It was a complete fabrication, a smear campaign even, to turn people against me. But it backfired. She had no evidence, and meanwhile, I had photos, eyewitnesses, everything. Most uh, could now clearly see her lies and manipulation. Her reputation sunk even lower. I kept my distance, avoiding any attempts by her to reconcile or sow these doubts about the divorce. My willpower strengthened from the massive betrayal I endured. This was happening on my terms, and I held all the cards and was not giving an inch. Let me know, uh, am I being too harsh? Final update one year later. Hey guys, it's been about a year since the big confrontation. Looking back, my life is in a better place. The divorce finalized with Sarah getting a fair settlement. We don't communicate at all, and I mean not even a word. She moved to a new city to escape the damage that her reputation here has done. <laughs> I heard from a mutual friend that she's, ah, she's doing all right. Has a new job, uh, apartment apparently, trying to move on, yada yada. I tried dating again, but nothing serious. I realized this experience made it hard for me to open up and trust someone new. My career is going well, my 
Family relationships are mostly repaired. On the surface, at least, my life looks good. But, uh, honestly, guys, underneath, I feel unfulfilled. I thought revenge would bring satisfaction, but instead, I just felt lonely. My bedroom's empty now, except for the dog that we got years ago together. He waits by the door for Sarah to come home still. That tears me up inside. I hug him and I cry. I started seeing a therapist to process everything that happened. It's helped me gain some perspective and start to properly grieve the life I lost. I didn't take the time to do that before. I mean, I was so obsessed with making Sarah pay that I never mourned us. Gradually, I'm rebuilding a sense of normalcy. I reconnected with old friends who weren't part of the whole ordeal. I even grabbed drinks with some mutual friends from my past with Sarah, which was tough, but in a healing way. Uh, through therapy, I realized I needed to forgive Sarah for my benefit more than hers. I wrote her a letter expressing my forgiveness and it lifted this huge weight off my shoulders that I carried the past year. I felt freer than I had in a long time. I was finally ready to let it go. Well, the experience forced a lot of realizations on me. You know, uh, commitment, really, and not taking your loved ones for granted. It still hurts, of course, but in hindsight, we're probably not as perfect together and ideal as I thought we were. So eventually, I'll be ready to open my heart again. Well, I'm content focusing on my personal growth and just rebuilding my identity. To anyone else who's been cheating on or even betrayed, my advice is this. Don't let the anger and pain consume you as I did at first. Learn on those who truly care about you. Focus on healing yourself above all else and try to find forgiveness when you are ready. For uh, them and yourself because you do deserve to be happy again. What's up everybody? Okay, so... I want to go ahead and look at two specific comments. These comments were going back and forth with each other in an argument style. So let's see what they have to say. Comment number one says, Look, I get that being cheated on is a nightmare nobody wants to face. But dude, your actions are way over the top. Planning a meticulous revenge for months, that's not justice. That's pettiness and cruelty on a whole new level. You're not the hero of this story. You're actually acting more like a villain. Divorce her. Cut your losses and move on. But uh, this whole revenge plot, it's unhealthy. And frankly, it makes you look bad, not her. You need to get over yourself and find a healthier way to deal with your pain. Comment number two, replying to comment number one. Hey, look, um, let's not be too quick to judge OP here. Imagine being in his shoes, I mean, finding your so-called soulmate betraying you in the most intimate way possible. That kind of betrayal doesn't just hurt, it shatters your entire world. Yes, revenge is not the healthiest response, but can we really blame him for feeling this way? He's clearly been through a lot and is trying to cope the best that he knows how. Maybe his actions are a bit extreme, but they come from a place of deep pain and betrayal. Let's show a bit more empathy for someone who just had their hearts ripped out. And the final comment is comment number one coming back at comment number two again with this response. Uh, no, um, I, I hear what you're saying about empathy, and I agree that what happened to OP is incredibly painful and devastating. No one's disputing the depth of the hurt caused by such a betrayal, but there's a line, a very thin one, between understanding somebody's pain and condoning unhealthy, destructive behavior. What OP describes isn't just coping. It's a calculated campaign of revenge that's harming both him and his ex-wife. We can empathize with his pain without endorsing actions that ultimately do more harm than good. Healing comes from letting go and moving forward, not from plotting revenge. By encouraging OP to continue down this path, aren't we just enabling a cycle of pain and anger? Well, this story had everything. I mean, intense revenge and just a hatred for some people. But we want to talk about these comments that we just reviewed. You have commenter A and commenter B basically in an argument back and forth with one another with the basic gist of it being commenter A says, look, I get that being cheated on is a nightmare and nobody wants to face, but dude, you're planning revenge meticulously for months. That's just ridiculous and too far. Then comment two comes in and basically says, hey, 
Let's not judge OP too quickly. I mean, being in his shoes, finding your so-called soulmate betraying you like this is ridiculous, and I don't blame him at all. So, I'm coming to you guys with the question, whose side are you on? Let's figure out in the comment section down below. Would you rather side with commenter A or commenter B? That's what I want to know for today's video. Guys, thank you for joining me on today's uh, special video. And if you want more daily revenge stories, I'd say your best bet is just to subscribe to the channel because I'm dropping videos every single day. All right, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind, guys. Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.